Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to see everyone here. Welcome to St. Matthew, to those who are here in-house and those who are online. We pray that your worship will be um, a great one with us. Um, our announcements today, we will be having a special door offering and we'll be having a video as soon as we're done um, with the announcements. And it's um, for Feed My Starving Children. It will s explain more um, through the video. Um, there's a special voters meeting next Sunday. Um, right after the service um, here in the sanctuary in, um, involving the call process. Noon Fellowship um, will be um, next week. Um, Papa Murphy's Pizza Pickup um, is this Wednesday, correct, Jenna? This Wednesday, Papa Murphy's Pickup. Um, fifth through eighth um, grade prayer and play night is this coming Friday night. More details um, in your bulletin with that. And um, please pick up your offering envelopes. They are still in the Great Hall. If you have someone you know of that um, has difficulty getting out and getting here to the church, um, please uh, drop off those envelopes for them. Just let us know. And with everything else, um, we give thanks and praise to God for this day. And we have birthdays. Birthdays. Whose birthday? Yes, Kathy. Kathy's was yesterday. Next Saturday is David's. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes. It's Tate's birthday today. Tate's birthday today. How old, Tate? Five. Yay. Any other birthdays? Yeah, Jenna. Surprise to Andrew, happy birthday on Wednesday. It's Greg's birthday on Friday. Yes, Lynn. Mike's birthday is on Saturday. Ha happy birthday to Mike on Saturday. Yay. All right, anniversaries. Yes. Gary. 63 for Gary and Velma. Happy anniversary. Wow, that's awesome. All right, with that, we'll get started with the video. Um, and then, as I said, there's a special door offering for Feed My Starving Children at both entrances on your way out. Thank you so much, and have a blessed day. Hi, St. Matthew. My name is Isaiah Mudge. I'm the second oldest child of Ron and Lisa Mudge, two missionaries who you helped to support while they were serving in Africa for 10 years. I was baptized at St. Matthew, and my grandparents, David and Kathy Roslansky, also attend there. I'm also a senior at Concordia University, Wisconsin. I'm majoring in pre-seminary studies, and I'll be attending our seminary in St. Louis this coming fall. This spring, I'm going to be leading a large service project at Concordia, Wisconsin. I'm going to be doing that in conjunction with an organization called Feed My Starving Children. For anybody who doesn't know what that is, that's a nonprofit organization that's developed a plan for sending meals to starving kids overseas. What they've done is they've de developed a system where an organization can gather a bunch of volunteers, Feed My Starving Children brings the equipment, and then everyone works together to pack nutritionally balanced meals. If one child receives one of these meals each day, that child will survive and will be able to grow. My goal is to pack 400,000 of these meals, which will be enough to feed 1,000 children every day for a year. But in order to do that, we're going to need to raise about $100,000. I've worked with a team of students at Concordia, Wisconsin, and we've reached out to every church in the South Wisconsin district, and I thought I might reach out to you. Like I said, this event is entirely student run, so the only funds we have are the funds we raise. A small donation goes a long way. Just 25 cents is enough to feed a child per day. It provides one meal, $20 provides 80 meals. 
So I would like you to prayerfully consider if this is something you feel called to donate to. Thank you, St. Matthew. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this and to ask you guys for help. Thank you for the fantastic work you guys are doing in Worthington, and God's blessings. Good morning, and welcome as we worship on this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Please rise for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father may make us fitting sanctuaries for his presence by the Holy Spirit 
we then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your words. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes.
The Old Testament lesson according to Isaiah chapter 58. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. My speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For new, who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person, which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. This is the word of the Lord. Would the congregation please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same 
will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We confess our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. Please be seated. Good morning. I love seeing some of the pink and hearts this morning. You guys must be getting ready for Valentine's Day, huh? No, no. Yeah, it's coming up. You're right. Well, I got a question for you. How many of you guys know what this is? Flashlight. Flashlight. What does a flashlight do? Yep, yeah, yep. So it shows light, right? When the light doesn't work, it can always help and save the day. Yes, definitely. So it can help people in the dark. It can shine light to see where where we're going, what we're looking for. You know what, though? I can't get, how, why isn't this working? Like, there's no light shining out of this. I know, I know. You can press even if I press, <coughs> even if I, it needs batteries. You don't think there's batteries in this? No? Even if I press it, it, sh it should come on, shouldn't it? Well, let, okay, let me see. Let me open it. That would be ridiculous if there's no batteries. There's no batteries. Did you two take the batteries out? No. no. Okay. Well, here we go. I, got, I just happen to have some batteries in my pocket. That's pretty crazy. So I'm going to try putting this in here. Let's see. Let's see if it works, okay? All right. So if I press the button, you're saying it's going to work now? Oh. <gasps> It does work. Yes. Okay, so it only worked until we put the batteries in. We needed the power, right? Yeah. Did you know that our Christian lives are kind of like this flashlight? Yes. How do you think that is? What is in the, did anybody listen to the gospel message? What do they say in the gospel message? We are all to be the light of the world. Just like this flashlight, we're supposed to be the light of the world. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, very good. So we are all supposed to shine the light of Jesus. We're supposed to spread the gospel message and spread Jesus' love to others, right? Because the gospel message is so amazing that we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to spread it to others. Yes, and spread it more. But you know what Jesus also says in the gospel message? He says not only that you are the light of the world, but he says, I was the light of the world. Do you guys know what that means? Yeah, yep. He made the sun, but he also is the sun, right? Jesus is the sun. But he says he's the light of the world, which we can't just shine Jesus' light by ourselves, right? We need Jesus. We need him to be able, he's our power source. So just like the batteries in here are the power source for the light here, 
That's, we need to stay connected to God all of the time in order to spread Jesus' light to others as well. Or even a lamp. When you think about a lamp getting plugged into an outlet, like it needs its power. So how do we stay connected to Jesus each and every day? What are some examples? Love him. Yes. What else? Take care of him. Okay. Yep. Take care of his people. What else? How can we stay connected to Jesus? What are things you do on... In Sunday school. What are some things you do in Sunday school? Pray, right? Hug him. That would be awesome to hug Jesus, right? Pray, read the Bible, go to church. But you know, God doesn't want us just to pray and read the Bible on Sunday mornings. He wants us to do that every day and praise him every single day. So we can ask God for his help to do that every day, and to spread Jesus' light to others through our actions and words. But we need to stay connected to him. Just like these batteries, God is our power, and we need to stay connected to him so he can help us shine Jesus' light to others. All right? Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for being our light in this world. Help us to spread that same love, light, kindness to other people around us and to spread your gospel message. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. We'll continue with the next hymn. <laughs> Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So can you imagine just starting out at a new job? <coughs> A job that you really have never done before. And at the beginning of your training, your boss says to you, you are the best salesperson, or you are the best mechanic. Or perhaps a coach 
saying to a team of inexperienced players at the beginning of a season, you are the world champions. Or teacher telling students at the beginning of an introductory class, you are the experts. Of course, such declarations would be ludicrous. One does not just start out training in a vocation and expect such lavish accolades. You have to learn. You have to pay your dues. You have to apply yourself in order to improve and advance. It takes more than wanting to be great. It takes more than somebody telling you you're great in order to be great. But things work differently with Jesus than they do with life's typical situations. So Jesus following, so following Jesus up a mountain, his disciples gather around him to begin their training their first catechism lesson, so to speak. They first hear the Beatitudes, Jesus teaching them about how blessed it is to be his disciple. Quite a different list of blessings than what the world would consider for being blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted. And even for those persecuted for Jesus' sake, he says, are blessed. Then he says to this, you are the salt of the earth. Okay, so how would these brand new, spanking new disciples of Jesus at least some of whom maybe even smelled of fish and brine from their previous vocation, be the salt of the earth. Not you should be, not you will be if you work hard enough, but you are, yes, you are. How could they be the ones who would give this world flavor how could they be the ones to be God's agents of preservation in this world to save people from the infestation of sin and the disastrous re results of it? But he doesn't back off, and Jesus, when he says something that seems hard to believe, often doubles down on it, and he does so with his, with his next words. Again, he says, you are the light of the world. Not you should be, not you will be if you work hard enough, but you are. That's what Jesus says to the four fishermen, plus maybe a couple of others by this time as well. Surely they weren't the most learned of men, but yet he compares them to a city on a hill perhaps a reference to Jerusalem itself. Jesus doesn't tone down his words. He warns them that they must live by and teach his commandments correctly, or else they would be least in the kingdom of heaven. And then he says this, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's like telling a fledgling engineer that he has to out-engineer Bill Gates or a middle school basketball player that he has to dunk on LeBron James. Or like a sales rep saying that he has to outsell the leading sales person of the company. Or telling a high school physics student, you've got to write a better dissertation than that physics professor who has a PhD. To those few people gathered around Jesus, those words would have seemed daunting. For the scribes and the Pharisees were seen as exemplars of righteousness. They knew the law, 
They knew all the regulations that they were supposed to keep, and they prided themselves on keeping those regu regulations precisely. How was the righteousness of these fledgling disciples supposed to exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees? It might be tempting to merely see Jesus as the new Moses here, harshly proclaiming the law of God, making unreasonable demands on his disciples, perhaps even setting them up for disappointment. How could they be the salt of the earth? How could they be the light of the world? How could their righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees? The key is in what Jesus also says to his disciples. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus is the one who fulfills the law in its entirety, not just by the externals, but with his heart and soul and strength. Jesus is the one who fulfills the prophets. He was the promised offspring, the one through whom all nations would be blessed, the Passover lamb, the king who would establish David's throne forever. Jesus is the one to be anointed to be the servant of the Lord, prophesied by Isaiah, and he was in his baptism. Jesus is the one who would be the suffering servant. In other words, Jesus is the one who truly is the salt of the earth, the one through whom the world receives preservation from sin by the shedding of his holy, precious blood. Jesus is the one who is the light of the world, and by his grace, his mercy shines and delivers and saves from darkness and sin and death. And especially his righteousness exceeded the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. For they, as righteous as they thought they were, were sinners. But Jesus had no sin in him. Jesus paid the dues. Jesus did the work. Jesus applied himself in fulfilling his Father's will that because he is truly the source of salt, he is truly the source of light, that you may in him be salt and light and righteous. So how could those disciples at the very beginning of their training be the salt of the earth, the light of the world? How could their righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees? As they trusted in Jesus, as they believed in him, as they remained in his word. Apart from him, they could do nothing, but with God, all things are possible. It's also the same for you and me. Jesus' words to his disciples apply to us as well. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And unless our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Perhaps you're new to the faith, or perhaps com confirmation class was decades in the rearview mirror. Do such statements of our Lord sound overwhelming? Is Jesus expecting way more out of us than we are capable? Well, in a way, yes. He does expect more out of us than we are capable. But not apart from him. He is the one who enables us to do the very things that he expects. Do we always appear as salt and light in this world? Obviously, no. And it didn't seem like that for Jesus' disciples as they were in training. Peter rebukes Jesus when he tells 
them of his upcoming passion. James and John want to rain down fire on towns that rejected Jesus. They squabble over which of them is the greatest. They all deserted him when he was betrayed. But as we repent of our sins, we receive the forgiveness that he purchased for us with his holy precious blood so that we remain salty and so that we bask in his light that we, we may be light to others. We as the church are the salt of the earth. As we remain salted by Jesus, preserved by him from our sins, so then also we act as salt when we proclaim the word of Christ to those in our midst. We as church are the light of the world. As we remain in the light of Christ's word, so shall that word be reflected in our lives. And as far as our righteousness exceeding that of the scribes and Pharisees, we receive that righteousness through holy baptism, through which we are renewed and regenerated through the Holy Spirit. It's not righteousness that we have earned by keeping the law. It's not, but it's righteousness that Jesus earned for you and me by fulfilling the law and the prophets. We can never do this apart from Christ. But we do as he preserves us and enlightens us through word and sacrament. Beloved in Christ, your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Yes, you are. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you delight to loose the bonds of wickedness and undo the straps of the heavy yoke that freed from sin's bondage, we may gladly receive your blessings. Preserve us from the lie that you are a cruel oppressor and give us thankful hearts to rejoice that you are the giver of all good gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, preserve your church by your life-giving word. Open the lips of pastors to declare your just decrees and store them up in the hearts of your people that we may delight in your promises and abound in good works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, give wisdom and courage to parents as they teach their children your ways. Make our homes havens of peace in a quarrelsome, self-seeking world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you declare that a young man may keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word. Protect children and youth against the siren calls of the devil, the world, and their own sinful nature. Grant delight in your testimonies as much as in all riches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, according to your wisdom, you establish rulers of this age for a time. Remember Joseph, our president, Timothy, our governor, and all those you have placed in authority, that they might fulfill their duties with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, cause healing to spring up speedily for the sake of your Son. Have mercy upon those who suffer afflictions of sin in mind and body, especially Emmett, Maureen, Gail, Bernadine, Bing, Ruby, Joanne, Sue, Jan, Joel, Ralph, Eileen, Darcy, Mary, 
and all others we remember in our hearts before you. Where you permit trial to remain, preserve your people in faith until the day when your light breaks forth like the dawn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for another year of married life together for Gary and Velma. Open their hearts always to receive more your love, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, bless and keep us as we continue through the call process. Strengthen and grant wisdom to the call committee as they consider decisions and directions. Be with our congregation in the midst of this process. And in your good and perfect timing, provide a pastor for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Brendan and Michaela Spittle, who were united yesterday in marriage, dear Lord Jesus, you instituted marriage to reflect the love that you have for us. Allow Brendan and Michelle's love to reflect your love and mercy for us. Grant that they grow together in the one flesh union to which you have joined them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, in Christ your righteousness goes before us and your glory is our rear guard. Answer our pleas for mercy this day in the gift of, gift of Christ's body and blood, and prepare all those who commune to receive him worthily and joyfully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Holy Spirit that delivered from the spirit of the world, that we may hold fast in faith to what you freely give us, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We worship the Lord with our offering. Please be seated.
Please rise for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. 
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you this week as you are salt of the earth, you are light of the world.